inherited a number of fascinating legal issues, and this being one of the ones I think most fascinating, because the issues are so glaring. There is no mistake about what is happening in the advertising industry. And the fact that the headquarters of many of the holding companies for the ad agencies are centered right here in New York, we dubbed this our Madison Avenue project. And our objective is to bring about a systemic change in how the ad agencies utilize the talents and skills of all people, not just one exclusive group. Uh, the co-counsel with the NAACP on the lawsuit that we are developing with the ad, on the ad agency, and that is Cyrus Melly, Mary from the law firm of Mary and Skelly. On my other right is the author of the fascinating and very devastating study that you're going to hear more about, and that is Mr. Richard Lapchick, who is, I have to get the name of his institution correctly, director for the Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sports at the University of Central Florida, located in Orlando. And he has several of his grad students who worked on that report here with him, and I'll acknowledge them just a little later. Uh, with me in the audience are Naomi Robinson, Austin Moss, Devin Dignan, Brian Hoff, and Jamil Kittners. We think that having observed the sports industry closely over the past 25 years, they have gotten what is obviously true of most of corporate America, that diversity is a business imperative. It's a moral imperative too, but for purposes of what, what we're meeting here today, it's the fact that it's a business imperative that I think takes precedence. In terms of the advertising industry's hiring practices, when you looked at all of the 67 ads together, including the ones produced in-house, the numbers didn't change very much. There were 70 white men, five white women, and one Latino. The Latino was the only person who was a minority in all of the creative directors. That creative director was the winner of a contest by Doritos to get into the mix of producing the uh, video. He was not, rep not represented as a, an employed uh, creative director, but won this contest. Um, I've spent probably more time trying to sell Madison Avenue. In my other life, I was uh, associate publisher of Ebony Jet. And the man I work for, Mr. Johnson, always said the only time he went to an agency was to get the address of the client. So to, to your question, the only way this can truly be resolved is to put the pressure on the clients because the clients can dictate to the agencies they have to have diversity in-house. This was the first year uh, that we've done this. Our intention at the Institute is to do this as an annual basis, that this would be a baseline of data that we could use to see how things have changed, if they've changed in the years ahead, much like we did with the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, WNBA, Major League Soccer, and college sport. When we started doing it with them, they were all doing pretty poorly except for the NBA, and now they're all doing much better on the, on the, in these areas. So that our hope next year is to have uh, more ads that have creative directors that portray America on a greater representation, and that the ads themselves look like America. I'm Sam Goldsmith from the Daily News. I think a lot of us in this room can agree that these ads are offensive. Though I wonder if the general public feels the same. Is there any way to gauge that or gauge it, what effect it has? I think it could be gauged by some kind of public opinion poll that would be done. We haven't done that, and we're probably not capable of doing that. I would think it would take a different agency to, to do that kind of widespread get that widespread information, which would be really, I think, important to have. <laughs> Last night I was talking to uh, the chairman of the Fritz Pollard Alliance, John Wooten, and just give him the heads up that we're doing this event today, and he said uh, uh, the House rules, and, and just said how offensive that was to African American men. And then before I could even get another word out, he brought up the Jim Nance ad and saying how offensive that is to women in America. And my view of this is that today's kind of a, another milestone in the struggle to, his, to right a historic wrong. And there are those in the industry, based on communications we've had, that are in a state of denial. They'll say to us, this is an issue of the past. Sure, there was a problem, but there's not a problem today. And that's what actually motivated me to t reach out to Dr. Labchick. 
because our investigation has shown there are very few people of color, if any, who are creative directors in the mainstream part of this industry. These five individuals st stood up and brought about change by working hard on this report. And before I could even get into a discussion with them, they had already done the research. They already came back and said, Cyrus, it's zero. One thing that struck me was that GoDaddy, um, you know, by people in the industry and outside of it, have been criticized for their um, exploitative uh, commercials. And those commercials were produced by the, the marketer, not by an agency. Um, so did you guys look at the composition of chief marketing officers at clients? Um, or account executives, or any of the other roles involved with producing a, yeah? We're looking at all the different roles. In terms of this report, yeah. the, uh, Dr. Lapchik and his team have looked at the creative directors, okay. because that is kind of the pinnacle of um, the creative side of the industry. Yeah.